This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver a child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of fur, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. Praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those, sorry, and peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go down to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with peace and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of Christ. Christmas 
that many questions will arise. This night we enter is filled with so much energy all around. Who notices this man and this woman as they ride in to Bethlehem? Who notices this pregnant Mary? Who notices this poor carpenter, poorly dressed? How many of them capture the eyes of anyone that they meet during the hustle and bustle of people trying to make accommodations for themselves? Do we recognize in our own hustling and bustling, in our own sense of busyness, do we see each other? Do we see people? Or are we just seeing figures? But the only person that we see is ourselves. Something similar. The world today continues to echo the human story, the same story that we meet in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, of people seeking after their own interests and their own comfort. Who cares about this man and this woman? This night shows us that no matter how much we plan, no matter what route we take, there are circumstances beyond our control. And as human beings, we like to be in control. We like to have this sense of knowing, of saying, this is what I'm going to do next year. Some of, some of us probably have some New Year's resolution that part of their sense five years ago that we're going to whip back out again and say, I'm new for 2022, I, I will be doing this and I will be doing it maybe for the first three days of, of January and after that, well, who cares? It was only a promise to myself after all. Not so? Yes. The circumstances that are beyond our control, none of us planned for COVID-19 to happen. None of us planned for it to invade our space, our homes, and our family life. If we knew that it was coming, we would have prepared ourselves better, not so? And these are the things that living as a Christian, we must understand that Joseph, who would have been making his own preparations and saying to Mary, listen, stop coming down to pee so much now. It is Jerusalem we're heading to, you know, Father, so this, how much time your back always hurts, and I have to take you down from the donkey, put your back on, and all the rest of it. I want to humanize the story for us, because many times when we listen to the Christmas story, it is so far removed from us that we do not see the humanity in it. Think of Joseph, as I said earlier, someone who has to have immense patience, who could have said to himself, why I didn't go to Jerusalem by myself. He took this, he took this woman, that's all. He went. And when you take that person with you, you must accept the, all the responsibilities that come with saying yes to the Lord. That is the example that we see in Joseph. That through it all, the scriptures never say to us that he made a complaint about this journey. She listened and supported her all the way. None of us can escape COVID-19. At this point, in our country, it is unavoidable. It is everywhere. It is around every corner. It is in every supermarket. It is in every market. It is in every toy store. It is in every school. It is everywhere. No matter how much you sanitize, you can sanitize now and somebody else can bring it inside of here. You understand? Things that are beyond our control, but yet, trust in God. We all know of someone at this point who has contracted COVID-19. And we all know I know someone who may have succumbed to COVID-19. For many others, these are only numbers. They're not real people. 
no are they real family? How many times do we hear the numbers? I think before I came to church today, I think the number was 37. And for many, that's just a number, not so. It is not multiple numbers they're calling out. It is not numbers for a play way. These are people. People. These people, 37. By how many extra family members who are thrown into mourning? Because we want to be irresponsible. No one wants to take responsibility. No one wants to say, stay away from me. All right? No one wants to say, everybody say, well, I know how to, I look at my garbage. I look at my garbage. What does looking like I have COVID look like? It looks like a poor or Cuba hospital. No, it looks like the person pushing the trolley. It looks like the person who's packing their school bag. It looks regular. And the importance of understanding the Christmas story is that God comes into the regular everyday life of people. That the world did not stop turning and operating the way that it was because the Son of God was about to be born. As Joseph entered into Jerusalem and into Bethlehem, the anxiety would raise, his heart would be beating as he sees so many people going to find a place to stay and yet his mind is torn in two. Should I leave Mary here while I go and search, or should I take her with me? Because the time is near. And everywhere he goes, he's turned away. He doesn't have enough money to bribe the innkeeper. There is no way for him to engage in corruption. All of that is in this story. Because those who have the means to buy their way into the inn, they would have done so. But Joseph, like so many other poor people, would have entered into Jerusalem, having to set up tents and other places. And even the place to set up tents is now full. And then Mary announces the child of Helena further panic for poor Joseph. But we don't, we don't consider Joseph in the story earlier. The time is coming. God is entering into this cold, harsh world so that we might be able to find newness of life. God enters into the brokenness of what this society is to show us that the king of glory is not going to be born in a place that is good, but a place that is not good enough for anybody else. That is the Christmas story. The first Christmas was not about gifts, but it was about finding a place, a place not to rest, but a place to bring about the king of the universe. And he was born being surrounded by the animals as witnesses of creation that God, that the God of all is about to bring life and defeat the enemy that for far too long has caused chaos and pain by keeping us separated from God. Can we enter into that place and spend some time away from the business, the noise and the clutter to find in the first cry of that infant Jesus who says, in that way, I am okay. So that is what has to happen. And as Jesus is born, all the fears and anxiety of Joseph departs. What he sees is that Mary has become a mother and he 
has become a father. As all this sinks in, he will not, he says to himself, for this is me just thinking about this situation. We will not be in this place forever. This stable, this manger. We will not be in this place forever. We must make the most of what we have right now. But I will find a better place for us tomorrow. Today let us pause and see the beauty of what salvation looks like. Salvation does not come in pomp and glory. It doesn't come with a suit and a tie. It comes in this bands of cloth. It comes with the announcement of angels to shepherds, to the nobodies. Salvation rings through the atmosphere while everyone continues in their busyness. The world continues to move on. When we are in pain, the world does not stop. When we make achievements and successes, the world does not stop to celebrate with us. But here, the kingdom of heaven pauses to acclaim that the Son of God is with us. Go and see this thing that has taken place. Go and see your salvation. Go and see this God of yours who has taken care of you all these years has come to see how well we can take care of him. So we too must understand that we will not always be in this place. Wherever we are, we should make the most of it. Love the ones that are around us. Care for them. Show compassion. Smile. Pay attention. Our children are crying out. They need us now more than ever. Now is not the time to offer your children socks and jockey shorts as Christmas gifts. Now is the time to give them toys so that they can unwind from a world that does not care about them. Have we stopped to listen to them? Have we stopped to consider what their tomorrow is going to be like if we continue on the trajectory that we are on right now. Faith and humility must coexist. They must walk hand in hand so that we do not think so much of ourselves as we think about those around us and those who will come after us. We will not be in this place forever. Others come into Jerusalem they arrive late and they make the most noise. They get on with the innkeeper and they begin to pay. Privilege, privilege gets its way. And that's the world that we live in. It's a world of privilege. It's a world between the hands and the half not. Yeah? That is where we exist. For those who have, always want more. And those who do not have, who are incapable of asking for more, even that we want to take away. That is the Christmas story. How do you think Joseph would feel seeing someone with money come in right after the innkeeper says to him, we have no space. And then somebody else just comes up and he opens the door to them and welcomes them. Oh, you never thought that that happened. Of course it did. Because people are people. No matter where we meet them, no matter how well a society may be organized, there will, be, there will always be this level of privilege that will never be eradicated. And we 
must remember that our Lord abandoned His glory to come down on earth to be born to poor parents to be in a stable to be laid in a manger but to remind us all that where He begins is not where He ends we will not be in this place sisters and brothers forever what are you going to do differently when you change location? What are we going to say to our children about this pandemic? Are we going to say, well, I was part of the union and I made some noise? I wanted more money. I wanted money more than you. I'm fighting for things that are passing away. Rather than fighting for a chance for you to live. There's so many things wrapped up in this Christmas story. But most of all, the Christmas story is about restoration of a lost humanity. Restoration because we cannot see beyond ourselves. So as we stop and we go home, all of us will probably continue baking bread or putting up curtains because some people like the midnight hour to put up their curtains and they need to feel that rush. When you do all of that and no one comes, what are we doing it for? I'm not saying you have to change your curtain, eh? probably up for a long time, so you probably need to change it. Right? But I'm saying pay attention. There are things in your home more valuable than cooking, that smell better than bread and ham. There are things in your home that you cannot buy, but you need them more. This Christmas, love your family, please. Do not think that you may have them forever. Hold on to them, hold that hand. Say to them, I love you, you are cherished. Say to them, I will miss you. Say to them, the things that can build up that relationship and are tearing down. Spend some time in the stable. Spend some time with humility so that when you leave from that place, Faith would have increased, but your love for people will continue wherever you go. The Almighty God, we praise this night and forever as we welcome Him into our hearts and into our homes so that we may celebrate Christmas anew. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in God to say the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 106. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. good. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last one. Amen. Today as we bring our prayers and intercession before God our Heavenly Father, Pray for those who are going through a very rough time, those who have been laid off, those who have been unemployed for quite some time. We pray that 
we will be able to continue to assist those who belong to our path. So the work of the social outreach will continue to happen, especially for those children who would have received packages from us. We ask you, all Lord, to bless their homes, their families, and that new opportunities will come and present themselves to those families that are so desperately in need of employment at this time. Lord, in our love, we pray for the many families that are in deep mourning and pain at this time. We pray for mothers who have lost their children, fathers who have lost their wives and children. We ask you, O Lord, to mend the brokenness in our country, to turn the tide against crime and violence, and that we, O Lord, will become a better people, seeking to love one another and be of service to each other. Lord, in your love, yeah. we pray for Bishop Ford, we pray for continued healing upon his wife, Dawn, for the members of his family. We pray for this diocese and all parishes as we enter into this Christmas time, that we will love and serve God more and more, that we will turn to him and rely upon God's saving grace as we continue our daily lives. Lord, in your love, yeah. we pray for the repose of the soul of Ina Brackett, the mother of one of our dear parishioners, Joanne Taylor. Pray for that entire family at this time as they continue to, to go through the grieving process as we begin Christmas. May our prayers resonate with them and fill them with some level of joy and comfort. Lord, in your love, we pray for Tamika Daniel celebrating a birthday at this time. Lord, as they enter this new year of life, May they continue to be grateful for all that you have done for them. May they never abandon the faith into which they have been baptized, but continue to grow spiritually, that they may not lose their heavenly reward. Lord, in your love, we continue with the intercession form C, page 108. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our bishops, all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love, be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. And for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We pray for ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of Him, call us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Let us say together. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercy. Look with compassion on us, and all turn to you for help. For you are created for God. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. The Act of Penitence, page 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us 
from full and unrighteous. Using for me, let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left under. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry. And we come to repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen your goodness and keep your life eternal. now. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Form A of the greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we all baptized into one body. All the made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer each other a gesture of Christ. If the persons that you are come with are from your own household, you can shake hands and stuff. Right? Dormitory Lim is in number 68, half the Herald Angels sing in 68.
page 155, the preface of Christmas on page 127. We begin with Offertory Prayer A on page 126. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the God of all. It is right and Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting Lord, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise it, join our voices with angels and angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. the 
death your son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May you make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, who long stand before you live in heaven, in songs of everlasting. Turn to your seat. 
Do not pull down your mask in front here. Alright, so I'm going over it slowly so that you understand. But no matter how many times I say it, someone is going to come here, pull down their mask, and I have to say to them, pull it up. When you get to the markers on the left, to the right, remove your mask, consume the sacrament, put your mask back on, and return to your seat. You must sanitize your hands before coming up, so please take your instructions for coming forward to the hush officers who are present who will ensure that your hands are also sanitized. Thank you for the seat your seat. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Body and blood of our Lord Jesus. 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 Body and blood of all Lord Jesus. The 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 body and blood of all Lord Jesus. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus. The 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 body and blood of our Lord Jesus. Body and blood of all Lord Jesus. Body and blood of all Lord Jesus. The body and blood of all Lord Jesus. Amen. The body and blood of all Lord Jesus. Oh. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus. 
the body and blood of our Lord. 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 The body and blood of our Lord. The body and blood of our Lord. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Body and blood of our Lord. The body and blood of our Lord. The body and blood of our Lord. The body and blood of our Lord. Our communion hymn is 602. Let all who are the flesh keep silence. Hymn 602. Second collection will be taken when you sing on this thing.
Post Communion Prayer in the middle of page 148. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shall I respond to Amen at the end of each invocation? May Almighty God who sent His Son to take our nature upon Him, to bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of His holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation guarded into all things earth and heaven, fill you with his joy and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this night and always. Amen.
Just say